Hey everybody, this is MVArts, back again with a new tutorial. Today we're going to create a distance map for subsurface scattering. As you can see, I've been working on a character. This character is going to be a mascot for my channel. When I was working on the shading, I came up with a way to generate an accurate subsurface scattering map. Quickly, what is subsurface scattering? Subsurface scattering is what you see when you have a light hitting your subject from behind. Through the ear you can see a reddish glow of light coming through. You can also see this effect in candles. What we need for our model is a way to tell which parts of the mesh have subsurface scattering and what parts don't. Also we need to tell Blender how strong this effect needs to be. For a PBR shader like the principal shader in Blender, we need a black and white map. These black and white maps I like to compare to a painting template. We can see our mesh as our surface we want to paint on. Let's say we want to paint a certain symbol on a brick wall. We use the template to cover up the areas of the mesh we don't want to be painted. When we remove the template, all the pieces that weren't covered are now a new color. In this metaphor, the new paint layer is our mixed in color or shader. Okay, this is the easiest way I found to generate a distance map within Blender. An important note is that this method only works on an unwrapped mesh. So you can make a smart UV unwrap or do a proper UV unwrap, but you definitely need UVs. For this to work, we need consistent lighting. Why do we need consistent lighting? Because we don't want a gradient fall off in the bake because this is going to determine the strength of the subsurface scattering. What we don't want is our model to be different on the other side. For example, in the ear. We don't want the left ear to potentially have less subsurface scattering than the right ear. That is why I always like to start with a sphere. So what we're going to do, we grab a UV sphere and we're going to scale this one up till it fits around the scene. I've already created a camera. So we can see what is happening. What we need to do is place the sphere in the middle of the mesh. Because the light rays then travel an equal distance. How we're gonna do this is select our character, go into edit mode. Select all the polys. You see here the middle is indicated by this circle. If we hit shift S and cursor to select it, then, add it uh, then exit edit mode. If we select the sphere, shift S again and say selected to cursor. You saw a shift in the sphere. I'm going to rename the sphere to emitter because we're going to apply an emission shader to this. First things first, I want to recalculate the normals of the emitter so that I'm sure they point inwards. How can we do this? We go into edit mode, select all the polys and hit Ctrl N. Nothing happened. That's because if you hit T or F6, you can make the normals consistent, consistent with the inside. Now that is done, you saw the normals flip. Of course, we could have done this within the specials menu, which you can get if you hit W and say flip normals. Flip normals again, okay. We can leave edit mode, maybe set it to smooth shading, and yeah, that's it. We can set up an emission shader. You know how that goes. Shader, there it is, emission shader. So this is how it looks right now. And we can crank it up to two. I separated the character onto two layers so that the other meshes don't cast shadows on the character. What we established right now is consistent lighting from each side. What we can do now is set up a shader for a character. Okay, I can delete this shader for right now. Um, I make a new one and I call this distance map. So, I tested out a couple of things. First of all, I tried doing it. Uh, first of all, I tried doing this with a single node. That is the volume absorption. Only one thing I found is that you can get some weird artifacts in the bake. A plus is that it bakes with less noise. If you think you can get away with it, you can try it. 
Otherwise, do the following. What we do is grab a volume scatter and a volume absorption. Last week I saw someone do it with a mix shader. I guess that works fine. What I always learned is you grab an add node and add the two together. Okay, let's see how that looks. Okay, so what we can see right now is the thickness of the model, right? We can see the light passing through and where the mesh is thicker, it results in a more black or more opaque feel. So what we have to do right now is set the absorption color to black and crank the value up to around 100. Of course this may vary for each scene because of the different scene settings and metric units used in Blender setups. So you might have to experiment with this a little. There you go. You can see that the ear has a decent amount of lighting passing through. This model doesn't have a lot of places I want subsurface scattering to show. Later on we see how we can tweak the map a little. Let's move on. This is perfect. The next part is baking. This is not a baking tutorial, so I won't go into detail, but I'll quickly run you through it. What we need to do is make a new texture in the image editor. I'm gonna call this distance map SSS for subsurface scattering. A 1024 pixel by 1024 pixels is okay for now. Uh, import the new texture in our material and select the distance map subsurface scattering. There it is. Keep the image texture selected in the node editor. Go to render settings. Important to note is that baking depends on your samples. So if you increase your samples, you're going to get a less noisy bake, which is fantastic. The downside of course is that your computer needs to calculate more and more. We're all set up, I guess, and we can hit bake. Oh. We only need the emission checked. Uh, if you won't turn off if you won't turn off the diffuse, you get a different result. Okay, hit bake. As you see, I left my samples on 128. That should be fine for now. So this is our result. As you can see, these are the ears, which appear to be most white. This is our distance map. What we can do with the distance map, of course we can plug it into the subsurface scattering strength. Before we do that, one thing is important, and that is saving this thing. I'm gonna save it here in the textures folder. I do this because if we don't do this and you restart Blender, our map is gonna be gone. And that we don't want. We don't need it here, so we can copy it from this shader to our skin shader. Uh, and plug it into the subsurface strength. First of all, I show you how it looks right now. This is how our map looks right now, on the mesh. You can change the color to something you like. Sometimes I like to pick a very contrasting color to see what is happening. Then, then let's see how it looks right now. Maybe pick a different color to match a bit better. Sometimes you still see some artifacts, but we can fix that. Okay, what you can do right now is place a converter color ramp in between, so we can tweak the map a little bit. And make the blacks a bit more black, and the whites a bit more whiter, or a lot whiter. Maybe dial it back a bit. Something like that. What you can do as well is use the subsurface scattering radius. Use these three to amplify the effect. If you lower the value to 0.1, it increases the effect. And scale it to 10, it's gonna be less of an effect. Let's leave it at 1. Also, we can do a math node in between. Converter, math node, multiply. Say, 5. But we don't want that, so mute the node. I think that wraps it up. Hopefully you guys like this as much as I do. It could be handy if you don't want to hand paint a map or don't have something like Substance Painter. Hope to see you guys next time. Ciao.